This video was sponsored by Brilliant. I have a discount for you to try them out at the end of the video, so stick around. Hey, happy Friday. This week we'll talk about Google finally bringing their Pixel camera magic to really cheap Android phones. We'll talk about Samsung profiting off of the demise of Chinese phone brands. And we'll also talk about India's Paytm creating an app store to save India from evil Google. Lots of air quotes in that last one. As always, there's also a tech knowledge quiz. So if you like testing your knowledge, it's linked down in the description and welcome to the Friday checkout. Okay, my pick of the week will be Google finally bringing their software camera magic from the Google Pixel line over to really cheap phones running Android Go, including their famous night mode and even their advanced HDR. The principle is simple. Android Go devices typically use Google's own Camera Go app rather than an app made by each phone manufacturer, which allows Google to bring stuff like multi-frame processing to third-party phones. Apparently, Google has to specifically optimize the feature for each camera sensor for it to work properly, and the three phones they have decided to start with are the Nokia 1.3, Wiko Y61, and Wiko Y81, all three of which cost around 100 euros. So that's quite exciting, actually. It means that really cheap phones could finally have passable cameras, maybe even better cameras than many of the mid-range phones that cost a lot more, but don't happen to have access to the same kind of software with Camera Go. Which is cool, except if you think about it, it's also kind of weird, and it really begs the question of why Google doesn't just bring these capabilities to more phones, maybe even more expensive phones outside of the Android Go project. Like if Google can just pick a few camera sensors in the low end and officially support those with fancy camera magic, they could surely do the same on the high end. Pick a couple of sensors to support and give phone makers who choose them an option to pre-install the Google app instead of building their own. Surely it would make sense at least for Android One phones like those from Nokia and Motorola, but I think they are unlikely to do it because they don't want to cannibalize their own Pixel sales. So they only support phones in price ranges where they don't compete instead of lifting up the Android ecosystem system as a whole, and I think that's rather unfortunate. Okay, my win of the week will be Samsung finally starting to profit off of all of the troubles of Chinese phone makers. So Samsung had an incredible quarter across pretty much all of its business units, but phones stand out with a huge jump from 54 million units last quarter to 80 million units this quarter. And while it's hard to say exactly what caused this jump, it seems very likely that Huawei's collapse in places like Europe and rising anti-China sentiments in India helped out Samsung tremendously. Just three months ago, Huawei made huge news that they finally overtook Samsung to becoming the number one phone seller in the world with 56 million units sold, but this quarter Samsung is very likely to take that spot back from them. I've made a whole bunch of videos explaining Huawei's troubles, you can watch them somewhere here, but because that was a super quick win, I actually have a little bonus win for you, and that is Ratio, the launcher from Block, coming to the Google Play Store. As I said in my full video on Ratio, I think this is the most ambitious Android launcher I've ever seen, and while previously you had to go through a complicated sign-up and installation process using a desktop companion app and an invite code and whatnot, all of that is gone now. The basic version of the launcher is free, it's in the Google Play Store, I tried it on my Note 10 where it worked really well, and the Block team even sent me a preview build of their upcoming premium version that on top of everything else will also finally introduce their unified messaging hub called the Tree. The tree is pretty basic so far and I wouldn't worry about it too much until they really pimp it up and polish it up, but the free version I think is really good and I don't get paid for saying this, but if you want to try it out, I've put a link to that down in the description. All right, and my fail of this week will be Paytm announcing that there's some sort of Indian tech messiah that is ready to save the whole Indian tech scene from evil Google with their app store this week. So just to recap, Paytm is India's largest mobile payments provider and they had a big disagreement with Google because A, they didn't like Google charging them 30% on digital transactions and B, they didn't like Google temporarily banning them from the Google Play Store over violating their online gambling rules. Last week, there was a rumor that Paytm and the Indian government were considering to build an actual app store to rival the Play Store, but this week, Paytm instead launched a so-called mini app store, and um, that's a completely different thing. 
The Paytm mini app store seems to be pretty much a carbon copy of China's WeChat mini apps platform rather than the Play Store, meaning that the users don't really download mobile apps from it, but rather get to use customized web apps inside the Paytm app itself. Paytm says that there are over 300 app makers on board currently, including McDonald's, Starbucks, and a bunch of local providers, all of which appear to be shopping related. And the way they pitched it, this was supposed to be some sort of a liberation from the evil Google Play Store because instead of charging Google's 30% cut, Paytm would charge only 0 to 2%. Like they're really focused on this difference and this 30% being the message. But that's where the story gets really disingenuous. Google generally only charges digital goods with 30%, like games or digital subscriptions like Spotify or, I don't know, Dropbox. None of which would typically work well as mini apps inside of another app like Paytm, so none of which will actually see any benefits. Sellers of physical goods like McDonald's or Starbucks or your local food delivery app, for example, or even local services like your ride hailing app like Ola, for example, which are actually the kinds of apps that make sense when they live inside of Paytm as mini apps. That's what Paytm advertises the platform with. Well, guess what? None of those ever had to pay the 30% transaction fee to Google. They could always use whatever payment method they wanted. So for them, nothing is really changing in terms of transaction fees either. In other words, the Paytm mini app platform doesn't really liberate anyone from having to pay the 30% Google tax for the sake of Indian tech independence or whatever Paytm markets this as. It's just a fancy search tool for finding web shops that will let users pay with Paytm inside the app. Now, don't get me wrong, search engines are incredibly important and they're actually really fascinating. And if you'd like to learn how they work, you can actually go and learn how to build a search engine over at Brilliant. Like any good brilliant course, you'll start with the basics, like learning how people searched actual books in libraries, and you'll quickly move on to challenges, each one teaching you a new aspect of search, like learning how the internet is crawled, to how indexes work, how excluding terms from your search results work, how you can speed up search results, and so on. And at the end, you'll end up with a real deep understanding of search, and who knows, then it might be time to move on to the next subject, maybe machine learning or quantum computing, or just some foundations of maths and physics. Brilliant has incredible high quality interactive courses that are bound to teach you real knowledge while also being extremely fun and entertaining. There are daily challenges so you can squeeze in a few minutes of learning even into a busy day and even if you're on the go and my viewers get a discount. Brilliant has a free plan but the first 200 people to sign up using brilliant.org tfc which is of course also linked down in the description will get 20% off their premium annual subscription. So check it out, sign up, and I'll see you next Friday.